Hello everyone. This morning I'm going to do a quick video. Well, I'll see how quick we, we are, knowing what I'm like. <laughs> uh, I was actually going to go and get a coffee this morning, but it's um, just started raining, so I thought I'll wait for it to pass. And uh, yeah, we've had this uh, ongoing rain in the tropics here. Hmm. Anyway, uh, this video is going to be about uh, chemical imbalance. Now I know this is a bit of a contentious issue, and uh, but I want to set something straight about this. So to sum it up basically that the chemical imbalance idea in our brain, that we have a chemical imbalance in our brain, has been debunked many times. There's no evidence of it at all. I, and I've done a lot of research on this. I've, I've really gone around and even found studies from Harvard and all sorts about you know, things related to not just a chemical imbalance, but also about what we can do to actually uh, balance ourselves out in general. So I've, I've thought for a long time through my studies and research and even own personal, I suppose, experimentation with foods and so forth that, that definitely, I was definitely able to get my moods under control quite a lot by understanding um, this, this aspect about food. But the, the greater point is to, to understand about the chemical imbalance that it's just not true. Now I know that that may get a lot of people quite upset and angry at me saying that, but I'm speaking facts here. I'm not making something up. I'm telling you the truth, and I'll put links and so forth uh, below, so you can you know look at it yourself or even do your own research. Now the reason I think it's important that you know this is because I read a lot of comments from people. I read it. Um, I go on forums and things. I read a lot of things. Sometimes I comment on things. Sometimes I don't. Um, but I'm trying to understand the nature of what people are going through, and if I can, perhaps help in some way I'd like to um, offer some you know some some advice perhaps but the reason it's really important to understand this is because what I do see through all of these comments and that, that I read over and over again is that people really have lost a lot of hope thinking oh my brain's this way I've got this imbalance I'll never be right and you know just accept that accept that that they can't get better because they have this this issue with their imbalance in their brain that they even need medication. And it's just not true. Uh, particularly to do with more to with SSRIs, um, the antipsychotic aspect, we'll have to delve into that at another point, but this is really looking more at the, uh, not just SSRIs, but any anti antidepressant actually. So I, I want to bring this to your attention because I don't want people going around thinking there's no hope, It'll always be like this, you know, thinking that they're damaged. Um, it's none of those things. So I, I'll, I'll read this quote here. It was from a man named Elliot Valenstein. He was a, or Valenstein, however you pronounce that. He was a, a, did a PhD, and he was a professor of, American psychologist, um, but he was a professor of neuroscience and psychology at the University of Michigan. Now, I believe he only died last year. But he said this, he said, a theory that is wrong is considered preferable to admitting our ignorance. So basically, and that can you can apply that to many things, but that's particularly you know poignant to, to make that remark in relation to the chemical imbalance, because what he's basically saying is that we would be it's preferable to just keep on going along with with his idea, this theory than to admit, oh, hang on, we had it all wrong to begin with. And this is not like a, a, a new idea. Um, but the issue too is that I find with a lot of people who have any kind of, well, not just, not just mental health issue, or not even just bipolar, but any kind of medical issue that we give so much power over to the doctors or therapists of any kind. But when we, and that's okay, you know, that there's a place for that, of course. Um, if they're supposed to be professionals and know better than us. But in this sort of area, such as mental health, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of experimentation. There's, I know I've, I've spoken to psychiatrists and, who are honest and ask them certain questions. I say, well, I, I just don't know, which I, I, I appreciate that they're honest about that, <clears throat> about certain things. So, <clears throat> so going back to this just for a moment with the, um, the chemical imbalance aspect, I, I, I took some, some notes here. Uh, just about some of the ideas of, you know, we're discussing this aspect of um, the chemical imbalance. So, 
So I wrote down why, why you need to know about this myth. Okay, so I'm trying to help you break a paradigm. So a, a paradigm basically is you know, a belief system. So we've been sold a belief system. You've been sold one, I have. I went along for many years. Some of you may have seen the photos of me, really fat, <laughs> from all the medications. Uh, you know, amongst all the other issues I had, you know, that was only one part, of course, all the other stuff going on inside myself. So if you just keep going along with this belief that this is the only way, or I've been told this, but see, it's not true. This is the thing. What, you're being lied to. We've all been lied to. And they continue to go along with this lie. And I'll, and I'll get to the, why, why that is in a moment. So it's an interesting thing too, taking from a, um, uh, a biblical quote of Jesus was saying, you know, know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, it does, I think, because if you understand that this imbalance, chemical imbalancing is not true, then you can sort of say, well, okay, I actually have more power over, over this condition than I, than I thought. There's actually nothing going wrong with my brain chemistry. Now, I'm not saying that people don't have brain damage in, in cases. That's, that's a different thing. But what we're generally sold, it's just, not, it's just not true. So this false belief will also keep you stuck, as I've already mentioned earlier in the video. Because a belief, a belief system is very powerful. And if you believe it, you know, that you can't get better. And I, I hear it. I've, I've heard people saying, I mean, I know where it comes from. They're just saying that really declaring very very powerfully in their in their comments about I'm always going to be like this it's never going to get better there's no way out anyone who says any difference full of crap lying that's including people like myself of course you know and I don't touch those sort of comments and I'll just just leave that I'm not looking for an argument with anybody I'm only presenting information to you and what you do with it, it's up to you you know I, I, I'm you know as some of you know I, I wrote a book about this and you know, there's available for purchase um, if you want. If you're interested in that, and also have an audio too if you don't like to read. But I'm just trying to help you. I'm, I really want to see people get better, and I don't think the current system is designed for that at all. And again, we'll get into that. This is not to do with any kind of conspiracy theories or anything like that. It's just basic understanding how how business and humans work. So. Just coming back to this idea of the paradigm too, what I wanted to say was, you know, a lot of people have thought and believed things for a long time in, in life, I mean, all through history. There was a, you know, the masses believed something, you know, like even, um, you know, the world was flat. Now I know that's, <laughs> in, in current day, and that's very, you know, it's another thing that can bring up some issues because a lot of people go on about flat earth and so forth. But what I'm getting at here is there's been a lot of, a lot of kickback over time through, all through history where the masses, masses of people believe one thing, but one person comes along and says, well, that's not true, and nobody believes them, even though it was true. Don't be that person. Don't be that person who just goes along. You know, there's so much avail available to you now to research. Even what I'm saying, I, never just believe what I say. Don't just believe it, what anyone just says. Always always, you know, do your own research and, and think about it. It's, um, I can't remember which philosopher said it, but it was something along the lines of, it's a sign of an intelligent mind that can entertain an idea without accepting it. So basically what that's getting at is that have an open mind, listen to everything, even things you don't even necessarily think you're going to agree with. Um, and sometimes if you want to get a balanced perspective, listen to three things you're definitely not going to agree with so you can understand it. It doesn't mean you have to accept it, just so you can understand it. So getting on to the next aspect about why would they lie? Well, I know I cannot, I didn't write down the year, but um, the antidepressant uh, is like $12.8 billion per, uh, per annum, uh, per year, our uh, sales. Now, why would they want to change that? Why? <laughs> this, is the, this is the problem with, with business, you know, a lot of the time, that there's a lot of uh, unethical approaches, <clears throat> excuse me, just for the sake of money. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's a pretty big one. And anyone who doesn't think that that's, <laughs> that would be going on with pharmaceutical companies, well, I think you need to <laughs> do a bit more research on that. So if you did seek an alternative route, uh, or even take into your own hands things that you can do to help yourself, which I'll, I'll, I'll touch on in a moment, well, there's not going to be any money in, in you. You know, you're a subscriber, essentially. Oops, you're a subscriber to to the pharmaceutical companies' uh, drugs, and they don't want you to get off them. I mean, there's no, I've, 
there's generally no foreseeable stopping with these things once, once you're on it. It's like, oh no, you'll, you'll be this one for the rest of your life. Again, that's put into your head. And, and look, you can if you want to. I'm not telling you not to do that. And maybe if you find benefit, great, go for it. You know, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm only presenting you the facts of this, this topic that the chemical imbalance is not true. It's, it's a lie. There's no evidence of it. Go and have a look. There's no evidence. There's plenty of counter evidence for it. There's been many studies done in many ways on both humans and animals um, where you would think that if there was an imbalance, it would have, you would have certain results and it, it just, there's no consistency with that. Uh, and again, I touched on this before that not, not all, not all, well, even some therapists aren't really moral sometimes too. Um, interesting thing about this, I don't know if I wrote it down here, but when I was doing my research and looking at studies and statistics, you know, a lot of doctors were saying that uh, they're not swayed by the drug companies at all. And through the studies, many studies done, they found that that is absolutely not true at all. And there's two reasons, actually, because it's not just the drug companies, but uh, insurance companies too, medical insurance companies, or health insurance, I think they call it in America. It's a little bit different in Australia, but because it's far more expensive for you to have a decent psych psychotherapy, whatever kind, than it is to just be prescribed drugs. So they really push for, for drugs to be to be the number one thing. And then, of course, you know, doctors get a lot of kickbacks from pharmaceuticals, and, you know, a lot of them are human, you know, just like the rest of us, and so, you know, a few little sweet deals here and there, um, they may be, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll prescribe that drug. Not even maybe even thinking about it in a, in a corrupt way. It does happen. I'm not saying it's all doctors, but it does happen. Um, so there's, a, there's another aspect there. It, it relates to business and money, you know, that aspect. So, so another thing I was just writing here about this issue with falsely believing the um, chemical imbalance is that I wrote that thinking this way is ingraining a helplessness, a victim mindset into you. As I, I mentioned earlier in this video at the beginning, that it's not, it's not helping you to believe this. Because if you really believe, you cannot be helped at all. This is how, it's, how it is. And also you get into genetics. And if you actually look into genetics, from what I've studied too, that's only um, usually about 5% uh, you know, if, if, if of an issue, uh, or chance, should I say, of things sort of coming back. And there are, there are definitely hereditary things and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, that's another topic in itself. But then there's also epigenetics, which is a, you know, above the, the genes in a sense. And... Uh, if any of you are familiar with Bruce Lipton, or if you're not, you should definitely look into his work. Uh, he's an incredible man. He wrote a book, you know, The Biology of Belief, and you, oh, you should look into that. Again, I'm just sort of repeating a few things here because I've already <laughs> spoken about a few things at the start of the video, but just saying believing this will keep you stuck in a faulty belief. Okay. But the other thing too, it removes personal responsibility. If you just say, oh, poor me, I'm. Uh, this is what it is. I, I just got to let it all go. I just... I just have to accept how it is. There's no responsibility. And I know that because I, I, <laughs> I speak to people, I read things, I, all sorts of things that if you want to get better, you, you've got to take personal responsibility. Giving all your power over to a therapist or a doctor every week, once, how often do you do it? And then going home and thinking, all right, everything's going to get better. They're not going to get better. That is not. Maybe, look, maybe in a few cases, some people say, oh, it did help me. Great. But overall, you, you're not going to fund fundamentally change. Because you're still the same person doing the same things. Okay. Now I'll come into that too. Just to, um, I mean, it's a big topic. That's why I wrote a book about it. But but I want to. We'll come back in a moment. Come back in a moment. And the other thing I was going to say about this, it also disempowers you. Again, because you're giving all your power to something, a, a false belief too, mind you, saying that I've got this chemical thing going in my brain, um, and then you say, well, I, I'm just I'm I'm at the, at the whim of it. That's very disempowering. This is not a place to be if you want to get better. You can't give away your power, and we do that so easily. And even, even the thing of people saying, declaring they're bipolar, saying I am this, you know, or I am anxious, or whatever it is, don't do that. It's a, it's, it's has a very fundamental effect on your on your psyche because words in themselves are symbols. So if you say the word bipolar to someone, and I know a lot of people have experiences again, I, I know this from speaking to people and reading comments that people can have very negative. Um, response to that if, if you say that to somebody not everybody but some people so we've got to be really careful because that's basically what I'm getting at it's a symbol in their mind so whatever they think 
uh, but bipolar is they apply it to you. Okay, straight away their mind goes, That's, this is what it means about this person. They've made a judgment on you. So we don't want to do that to ourselves. We don't want to say, I am this, and, and put that back on ourselves. And Because I said words are symbols. So whatever your idea of bipolar is, you're just reaffirming that in your mind. Don't do that. It's okay to say, all right, I've got a diagnosis of bipolar and I'm experiencing these symptoms, which are grouped in bipolar. That's different because you're saying, I'm having experience of this. Not saying that I am this, because saying I am means that in a sense, you're almost like, I can't get out of it. This is it. This is what I am. I am this thing. But you're not. You're not, you're not a bunch of symptoms. You're experiencing symptoms. Okay, so just don't say that about yourself. Seriously, it's not good for the mind to do that. Um, the other thing I was going to touch on here, so me saying this, I want to bring this up, should, should you stop taking medications? And the answer is no. I got off medications, but I'm not advising you to do so because for a number of reasons. I don't know your personal history. Maybe they're helping you. Maybe they're not. I don't know. I'm not getting involved with that. I, I, I have a belief that a lot of people could get off them, potentially. I believe that. That's my, we'll call it my belief system. Okay. Um, but I, I would certainly not tell anyone to do that. It's not my role to do that. It's, I, you know, you need to discuss that with your therapist, doctor, whatever. And you've got to work out essentially what's right for you, though. You know, if you feel it's not, it's right for you to, to try to wean off them or something like that, we'll discuss that with your therapist, doctor, whoever you're speaking with. But I can't give you an advice on that, and I won't. So I'm not telling you to not do them. Take them. Um, my point really is just to, uh, is, is for you to take more control, you know, and not, not, not make excuses to, to take action in your own life. You know, to, to put it on to, oh, I've got this chemical imbalance or it's genetic or whatever the reason is. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can, you can, I guarantee you can do better. <laughs> you can do better. You can improve, improve your life. And what I'll, I, I think I'll get it down here. Um, I don't, but I'll talk about it in a moment. So, uh, so the, anyway, so getting down to, this is something I've, I've thought about for years and it seems to be the truth in this, particularly a recent Harvard study, I just read about this, that I think there is an imbalance, a chemical imbalance, but not in the brain. It's in your gut, okay? So the gut has what's called the microbiome and it's, it's through all my studies, not just do with mental health, just in health in general. It is so important that we get that right. Um, and don't kill all the, all the good bacteria in our gut because it does a lot of things for our hormones and a whole bunch of things. It's, it's very important, very important. So you can actually affect your, well, we'll call it chemicals, <laughs> biological chemicals in the body by the foods you eat. So I know a lot of people eat a very poor diet, very unhealthy. And that's often doing a lot of damage to your gut and your gut microbiome, which affects your moods. Because majority of ser uh, serotonin comes from your gut anyway. I think it's, I think Harvard they said it was about ninety percent. I think from memory, I thought that didn't. No, ninety five percent. Wow, that's quite a lot. Um, so you can understand then that the brain chemical imbalance is just not true. However, there is a potential chemical imbalance in in the gut. Uh, so to get that right, you got to start eating healthy. You got to get rid of all the junk. And I, I now, personally, I eat a, a plant-based or vegan diet. Um, and that's improved, improved my health and just in every area, in every way. Just, I feel better. I look, I look younger now. I look better now uh, from, from doing this than I did uh, 10 years ago. You know, I look, I look better and youth, more youthful now than I did 10 years ago from eating this. But it's not just about looks. It, it's about how good I feel in my mind. You know, where... We're a psychophysical unit, that is the, the mind affects the body and the body affects the mind. So we need to look at you know, all areas of our life, which I've, again, spoken about in my book, um, Holistic Approach, that we need to look at everything. Uh, now I think, that was a, I think that was about it, so what, what are we up to? Well, quick video, it's almost 20 minutes, but I wanted to touch on that and I, I hope you find some value in what I'm saying there. And again, you can do your own research. Um, and again, if you are interested, I've got the, my physical book, got a few now that have finally uh, arrived. But again, I also have the, uh, the PDF uh, ebook and also the audio book available. I am setting up a, a new website too that I um, haven't quite got there yet. I've been working, working on it and, uh, and I plan to have some resources on there in, in the near future. And again, if anybody was interested uh, in some kind of I guess a, um, a program or a course or something like that, maybe 
maybe that's not the right word, but more of a program of you know, giving a bit of an idea of a, of a path forward. Because I never had that. When I, when I worked on getting myself better, I never had that. It was just totally, you know, poking around the dark, totally blind. Like, because I was told for so long too, you can't get better. You'll never get better. All that crap. And I believed it. I believed it. And then until I realized, well, even if it's true, I felt a lot better than I did <laughs> taking all those medications, that's for sure. Um, and I certainly was a lot healthier too. So anyway, I'm going to leave this here. I hope you find some value in this. And uh, if you have any questions um, or things you'd like me to perhaps address in a video, um, please feel free to put them down in the comments uh, or just you know, you can send me an email too. All right, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope this has been helpful for you and got you thinking in a hopefully more positive way about things. Uh, it's not, certainly not meant to, to bring you down. Okay, have a great day. Bye.